every time I put this number on the, on the screen, I am tempted to say that I have a thousand euros in my pocket, which I don't. Uh, a thousand, I'm from Ireland, uh, a thousand euros in my pocket for anybody who can tell me why this number is the most important number for any modern leader. Just out of curiosity, nobody has ever been able to tell me. Anybody recognize that number? <coughs> Seriously, very, very critically important number. And it's one you will become familiar with over the next couple of years. What if I told you it was the Losada line? Would that help? No. Here's one of the great things about researching these books. When you research a book like this, you come across a lot of research that's relatively young. Now, managerial and leadership research, what we work on today, tends to be typically 15, 12, 15 years old. You know, so a lot of the stuff, the, the conventional wisdom that's in books today is based upon ideas that, that were started, you know, 12 and 15 years ago. And it takes a long time for useful research to find their way into, let's call it popular literature. There's a gentleman called Gabriel, uh, or Marcial Losada, and he is a psychologist and productivity expert. And he specifically looked at the impact of a positive environment on productivity. The 10 years extraordinary research working in the real world. We're not talking about laboratory work. Working in the real world with real teams in some very, very tough industries around the world. And what he found was, and what he defined was this Losada number. He said that in every workplace, in every environment, there must be a ratio of at least 2.9301. I like the drama. We should really say three to one, but I like the drama of 2.901, three to one. There should be three to one positive versus negative interactions or experience. Just to maintain a balanced or neutral pH negative environment, or a neutral environment. So in other words, you must have an environment where if you're talking about your interpersonal relationship with your people, where for every one interaction with you, where they have a negative experience. And sometimes you have to have uh, negative or what are perceived as negative conversations. There needs to be a minimum of three compensating positive experiences. In an environment, uh, a work environment, you must have an environment where in general the messaging, the tone, the things that happen must be at least three to one positive uh, in the, uh, balance in the, the positive direction in order for you to have an environment where you are not going to disengage people. You haven't engaged people yet, you're just not going to disengage them. And what the, the research says is you put, you create an environment where people are working where it's less than three to one. Communication breaks down, relationships break down, creativity dies and the team to use his language uh, languish. They just basically dribble away. Productivity goes out the window. Nobody except the leader will take responsibility for making sure that happens. Now, what his research said was it actually needs to, uh, the upper limit is about 11 to 1. After 11 to 1, apparently, you can get an environment that's too positive. And it starts to have a negative impact of having too happy, clappy, uh, and positive an environment. And in fact, in, in the real sense, he has only ever measured just a little under 6 or 5.6 to 1. So here's the thing. You better, if you want to engage people, if you want to create an environment in which people are impacted by you to engage with their work, create an environment where... They are, it is balanced in a positive direction. Everything that happens is balanced in a positive direction by a ratio of a minimum of three to one and ideally up to six to one. Everything. Now, there are lots and lots of ways that you can interact with people. It doesn't always have to be smiling at them and clapping them on the back and so on and so forth. The key message is create a toxic environment and people become toxic. People disengage. Create a positive environment and they flourish. In fact, what they talk about there, when you get people working in teams where they're working at that five or six to one type level, they get into what, uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of the Hungarian researcher. 
Oh, you might remember. You might have been paying attention in school, uh, in college. But you remember the flow state. And flow state is almost like a personal... Um, uh, uh, it's, it's, I'll give you an example. Have you ever got into your car and you're so engaged with something that's going in your head, you're on the way home, and you're so wrapped up in some issues going on at work, you drive onto the, front, the, the path of your house and you say, how'd I get here? You know that experience where time just goes by like that, you're so engaged with the problem. Well, when you create an environment like that, people get into what they call flow. It's like a resonance where they don't notice time go by where they actually enjoy their work, where they're engaged with their work, and they're engaged with their leaders. Leaders who create that environment, create an environment in which creativity thrives, relationships are enhanced, people work in flow, productivity rises.